So we invite you to bring a um, candle with you if you have one handy and a lighter for a ritual later. We also wanted to let you know that we'll be recording. So if you, for any reason, don't want to be recorded, um, you can turn your video off and participate um, just using the chat. So that's an option for you. And then um, just a quick, I know everyone is such a Zoom pro at this point, but you may want to use the speaker view option in Zoom. It's on the top right of your screen. So when you click view, you can toggle between gallery if you want to see all the wonderful faces around you or the speaker, which is above it, if you want to see just the person who is talking. Um, and with that, I think we're ready to begin unless I forgot anything. Um, so thank you so much everyone for being here. Thank you, Lizzie. I'm going to do the opening, but I have a brief explanation. We, it is a call and response, and the litany I'm offering is an adaptation from Isaiah 55. And what I will do is I will prompt you when to respond. We'll stay muted because to try to do anything in unison on Zoom is a bit of a challenge. So it's an invitation for you to respond verbally and the words will be up on the screen. I'll actually read them for you. The response words are divine spirit sustainer. As we worship you, fill us with overflowing love and transforming joy. But I'm gonna ring the chime to begin with just to let us center ourselves and take a few deep breaths and then I'll begin the reading. And I'll ring the chime at the end to close. Come to the waters, you who are thirsty, you who are hungry, come to the feast. Sweet spirit, you have many names and call us with many voices. We come to you now from many traditions. We respond to your presence in our own special and unique ways. May the variety of our lives and the diversity of our beliefs create a harmony worth singing. May the common threads of our experience and the shared journey that we walk create a story worth telling. Please respond. Divine spirit sustainer, as we worship you, fill us with overflowing love and transforming joy. Stand in the presence of healing water, you who are sick, you who know despair, discover the horizon line of possibility. Spirit of life and death, fill this space with your power and strength. In these moments as we gather to celebrate and to mourn, to remember and retell, bind our wounds, fill the empty spaces inside, inspire us to sing glad songs for a better tomorrow. Please respond. Divine Spirit Sustainer, as we worship you, fill us with overflowing love and transforming joy. All you who labor, find your rest here beside the holy. You who are idle and aimless, hear a call to action. Spirit of justice and compassion, speak to us again through the voice of our ancestors and all those who have gone before us. Reassure us that our work has meaning, our struggle has purpose. Ignite in us a passion to grow the seeds of goodness and peace. Show us what wonders our love can accomplish. Please respond. Divine spirit sustainer, as we worship you, fill us with overflowing love and transforming joy. You who have been blessed, be a blessing for those around you. You who have something to be grateful for, give thanks. Powerful spirit, you are the joy that sparks laughter and the love that brings tears. Take this humble space and make it more than it is. As we gather to consecrate this season and as we gather to revel in the power of love to overcome life's burdens, bless us with hope and perseverance. As we gather to live out your command to love one another, bless us with courage and confidence. 
please respond. Divine spirit sustainer, as we worship you, fill us with overflowing love and transforming joy. Come to the waters, you who are thirsty, you who are hungry, come to the feast. I now invite you to share in a, it's an invitation to participate in a very simple winter solstice ritual. So if you have the candle nearby and have not already um, lit the candle, go ahead and light your candle. I'll open with a brief poem by Louise Nair. It is the darkest day of the year when we fold into ourselves like feathered birds gazing at the inside of a candle flame, at the small sparks of humanity, the place of light. The winter solstice, as we all know, is celebrated on the shortest day of the year, usually December 21st, which is tomorrow. Long ago, people feared that the sunlight would not come back again. They began the tradition of burning Yule logs to help bring back the light. In celebrating the solstice, we celebrate the seasons of change and honor Mother Earth. Here is a ritual that can be done by yourself or with friends and family. Some people choose to do it actually on the night of the 21st, but we're going to do it together now. And it's to help us remember that the light will come back and eventually turn the barren earth into fields of green. Think about the light and gaze into the flickering candle flame. Take a deep breath to kind of center yourself. The winter solstice actually marks the return of the light. It's the day where the days begin to get a little bit longer and we experience a little more light going forward. Focus on the flickering flame. Take in a deep breath and let it out very slowly. Allow yourself to embrace the warmth and hope the glow of the candle brings. Consider how you can spread your light out into the world. Astrologically, the winter solstice marks the moment that the sun, the ruler of the zodiac, moves from the adventurous fire sign of Sagittarius to the st steady earth sign of Capricorn. As we continue to be conscious of our breathing, focus on how the solstice comes right before the new year. It's an opportunity to usher out the old and make room for the new. It's a time for light and laughter and celebration, certainly, but also a time of deep contemplation. As you gaze into the flame, Give yourself credit for having the strength to overcome any difficulties that you've been pay faced with this past year. And we all know what a challenging year is it, it has been. And take a moment to contemplate some of your hopes and dreams for the new year, which is full of possibilities. As you continue to gaze into the flame, Make a wish for the earth. Make a wish for our nation. And make a wish for yourself. Divine spirit, let our light shine inside us and outside us throughout the darkness of winter and beyond. The closing poem is from the Zuni tribe. It's a Zuni prayer to the sun. Who among men and all creatures could live without the sun, Father? For her light brings day, 
warms and gladdens Mother Earth with rain, which flows forth the water we drink. And that causes the flesh of Mother Earth to yield seeds abundantly. That's from the Zuni tribe. At this point, you may carefully extinguish your flame or you may leave it burning for the rest of the service if you prefer. Thank you so much for sharing with me and blessed be. Thank you so much, Terry. So moving on, I realized I didn't share our order of service with you in the beginning. So we'll have a reading called the Woolman Test of Reality. We'll have a meditation together. We'll hear reflections on solstice duality of light and shadow. We'll have a song performed for you. And we'll close by lifting up some names in our community with a closing prayer. We'll have an optional um, coffee hour at the end for anyone who would like to stay and have a discussion. Next, um, I'll be giving a reading again called the Woolman Test of Reality. And this is condensed from a uh, story called Uh-Oh by Robert Fulgham, who is a Unitarian Universalist minister and also an author of the book called All I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. So here is a reading for you. It was the summer of 1959. At a resort in, in the Sierra Nevada of Northern California, I had a job that combined being the night desk clerk in the lodge and helping with the horse wrangling at the stables. The owner manager was Swiss with European notions about conditions of employment. He and I did not get along. I thought he was a fascist who wanted peasant employees who knew their place. I was 22, just out of college and pretty free with my opinions. One week, the employees had been served the same thing for lunch every single day. Two wieners, a mound of sauerkraut, and stale rolls. To compound insult with injury, the cost of the meals was deducted from our paychecks. I was outraged. On Friday night of that awful week, I was at my desk job around 11 p.m., and the night auditor had just come on duty. I went into the kitchen and saw a note to the chef to the effect that wieners and sauerkraut were on the employee menu for two more days. That tore it. For lack of any better audience, I unloaded on the night auditor, Sigmund Woolman. I declared that I had had it up to here, that I was going to get a plate of wieners and sauerkraut and wake up the owner and throw it at him. Nobody was going to make me eat wieners and sauerkraut for a whole week and make me pay for it, and this was un-American, and I didn't like wieners and sauerkraut enough to eat them one day, for God's sake, and the whole hotel stunk, and I was packing my bags and heading for Montana, where they never even heard of wieners and sauerkraut, and wouldn't feed that stuff to pigs. Something like that. I raved on in this way for 20 minutes. My monologue was delivered at the top of my lungs, punctuated by blows on the front desk with a fly swatter, the kicking of chairs, and much profanity. As I pitched my fit, Sigmund Woolman sat quietly on his stool, watching me with sorrowful eyes. Put a bloodhound in a suit and tie, and you have Sigmund Woolman. He had good reason to look sorrowful. Survivor of Auschwitz, three years. German Jew. Thin, coughed a lot. He liked being alone at the night job. It gave him intellectual space, peace and quiet. And even more, he could go into the kitchen and have a snack whenever he wanted to. All the wieners and sauerkraut he wished. To him, a feast. More than that, there was nobody around to tell him what to do. In Auschwitz, he had dreamed of such a time. The only person he saw at work was me, the nightly disturber of his dream. Our shifts overlapped an hour. And here I was, a one-man war party at full cry. Listen, Fulcum, listen to me, listen to me. You know what's wrong with you? It's not wieners and kraut and it's not the boss and it's not the chef and it's not this job. So what's wrong with me? Fulcum, you think you know everything but you don't know the difference between an inconvenience and a problem. If you break your neck, if you have nothing to eat, if your house is on fire, then you got a problem. Everything else is inconvenience. Life is inconvenient. Life is lumpy. Learn to separate the inconveniences from the real problems. You will live longer and will not annoy people like me so much. Good night. 
In a gesture combining dismissal and blessing, he waved me off to bed. Seldom in my life have I been hit between the eyes so hard with truth. There in that late night darkness of a Sierra Nevada Inn, Sigmund Woolman simultaneously kicked my butt and opened a window in my mind. For 30 years now, in times of stress and strain, when something has me backed against the wall and I'm ready to do something really stupid with my anger, a sorrowful face appears in my mind and asks, Fulcum, problem or inconvenience? I think of this as the Wallman test of reality. Life is lumpy. And a lump in the oatmeal, a lump in the throat, and a lump in the breast are not the same lump. One should learn the difference. Good night, Sig. Thank you. May we all become skilled in that skill of discerning problems from inconveniences. <laughs> so next we'll be offering a meditation. And as we get settled into this meditation, it'll be around five to 10 minutes and it might be helpful to turn your video off if you prefer. You can um, find a comfortable position as you get settled in, um, maybe sitting, maybe cross-legged or in your chair with a, um, a more upright posture. And the meditation I'll be leading um, is from the book Boundless Healing by Tulku Tinda. And it's a Tibetan meditation meant to calm the body and to work with any feelings of uneasiness. So as we begin, just get settled in, find a comfortable seat. Allow your body to settle into whatever is holding you, whether it's a chair, the ground. And I invite you to take a couple of deep breaths into your belly. So as you inhale, feel your abdomen expand. Take a nice slow exhale with an open mouth. Inhale again, allow your belly to fill up. Take a nice open mouth exhale. Next, try to let your mind generate calmness in your body by thinking, let my body be calm. Think and feel that your whole body is calm. Give yourself permission to feel very calm and relaxed. Now slowly go from one part of your body to another, deepening the feeling of calm, starting with the soles of your feet. Bring awareness of calm there. Expand this feeling of calmness by actually feeling that your feet are calm. Go on slowly, focusing on your legs, allowing your legs to be calm, your abdomen, allowing your abdomen to be calm your upper body and shoulders, allowing those to be calm. Feel that your arms and your hands are very calm. Bring calmness to your neck. Feel that your head is calm. Bring awareness of calm to your brain, which is usually so busy with thoughts and plans. Enjoy the feeling of calmness and peace there. If you feel any areas of tension, for example, in the muscles of your shoulder, or your neck, or your jaw, simply bring an awareness to those muscles. Tell them it's okay to let go, to feel completely relaxed and calm. When you feel complete in the various parts of your body, bring your awareness to your whole body again. Enjoy the feeling of your body's being one in deep calmness and peace. Now think and feel that everything around you is also calm. 
as if an aura of calmness were filling the room around you. Now, expand that feeling of calm to the town or the city or the countryside where you live. Taking this feeling of calm, feel that the whole nation is filled with calmness. Expand this feeling of calm to the whole earth. And as you breathe with this feeling of calm, see if you can expand it to the whole universe. Radiating peace. Everything is calm and peaceful. Enjoy this feeling of boundless calm and universal peace as we sit in silence for a few moments. When you're ready, you can start to slowly blink open your eyes. Maybe bring some small movements into your fingers and toes, shoulders and arms. Just taking any movements that would feel good to bring your body back into this space together. Maybe taking a couple of deep breaths and arriving back. Thank you. A solstice reflection. Duality of light and shadow. Nature's winter solstice has shorter days and longer nights. Tilt of the earth changing at a day of transformation. A stopping or standing still of the sun. Longer shadows yield to longer nights. Nature turns in to the womb of Mother Earth, hibernating in a calm regeneration of peaceful rest. Surrendering, relaxing, allowing for healing stillness. Sunrise with longer light. Truncated shadows with shorter darkness. Birds celebrating song of new life. Soul lifted from the shadows. Heart opened in abundance. Mind present in the acceptance of the moment. A gift of new life inspired 
in silence, conceived in the shadows of the light. A past reflection from the shadows into the light. I have grown in a practical way. Work hard, I will be worthy. And I now see, I can feel abundant in different ways. In the past, it was easier to live in the shadows of what I could not have. Was I not worthy? Work hard and struggle became my shadow friend. I was admired and accepted. Unaware that this shadow left little energy for joy. I would seek validation in others to justify my dance of anger. In this dance, a path of light appears Curiosity in mind and opportunity in heart. Shadow, let go, and I will share you with the light. A solstice prayer. My dear shadows, the illusion of my suffering, I pass on to you. I surrender myself empty. Broken, I sit in silence, open to possibility. Vulnerable in my imperfection, curious to whatever comes. Scared that I will be something different open to possibility without knowing why. Hopeful, the first step to be without boundaries. Empowered by grace of wisdom and gratitude. Peaceful, I stand ready to lean in to the sanctuary of this loving acceptance in the shadow of healing and in the light of abundance, may it be so. A reflection prayer, a reflection prayer of the day. Day of longer light. In darkness, there is a purpose unique to us all. Even in the days we are quarantined, isolated, socially distanced, masked, even when washing your hands, the length it takes to sing happy birthday twice. Hiding in the dark of evening becomes the alternative to the loss of social gathering. Our responsibility is to stay away from each other, to stay safe. A loss of a way of life we know. Of available community and camaraderie. Work to pay the bills. Of family gathering for birthdays or holidays. Of worthiness, health, and even life void of the zeal of life that we expect. Yet, in the dark stillness, there is a flicker light of hope. Darkness knows its intimate relationship to light, gives purpose to its own life. To let go long enough to allow the warmth of light to ignite mother nature and the spirit of our lives. Release the conditions that keep us hidden from our passions 
unbind the status quo, to move beyond what we know. Unchain what does not serve us so that we may serve others. Surrender expectations, envy, judgment, pride, embracing imperfections that inspire transformation and bring into the light a loving kindness so abundant that when we smile behind our masks, there is no more fear in our eyes. An open heart, an open mind to be filled with joy. Empathy so deep that you cannot walk away. Compassion so profound. There is only room for abundance. Aware that our divine spirit is gently guiding us through the dark. And as we heal from loss, from brokenness, our inner light shines so bright that even the simple inspiration of just being is good enough. May it be so, blessed be. Sure on this shining night by James Adji and Samuel Barber. Sure on this shining night of star made shadows round, kindness must watch for me. This side the ground. The late year lies down at the north. All is healed. All is health. High summer holds the earth, hearts all whole. Sure on this shining night, I weep for wonder, wandering far alone of shadows on the stars. <clears throat> sure on this shining night of star made shadows round kindness must watch for me this side the ground The late year lies down the north. All is healed. All is health. I summer holds the earth. Hearts <clears throat> Sure on this shining night As I weep from wonder Wandering far along of shadows on the stars. Shadows. 
shadows on the stars. There we go. Thank you so much, Chris. That was beautiful. We are going to now observe a two minute period of silence, but in the order of service, it says lift up a name. And this is an invitation for you to, and you can do it muted or unmuted because I think with Zoom, it's okay if we overlap a little bit with the saying of the name, it's completely up to you. Two minutes will seem like a long time, but um, if you want to lift up a name of someone who's no longer with you or someone who needs is in need of being lifted up or even someone who brings you great joy, just say their name out loud during this two minute period of silence. I'll ring the chime to begin it. And then I'll ring the chime at the end of the two minute period and I'll then give the closing prayer. Ted. Charlotte. Michelle. Alexis. David and Mary. Larry. Christopher. Nan and Nora and Sadie. Buddy and Ashlyn. Arlene. Timothy and Cormac. Lily. Shirley and Betty and Geneva. Ian and Doreen. Angie and Kelly. All the animals. Chrissy and Wesley. Barbara. Excuse me. Divine Spirit, Spirit of life, more abundant than the grains of sand in the desert, greater than the highest mountains, green and growing like fields of grain, we thank you for the beauty and the mystery of the earth and for the love that we share in this incredible community of faith known as Chime. We know you in the wind that sculpts the desert. You are molten lava birthing a new island. We feel you shaping the world, calling us to be co-creators with you. 
When we open ourselves to your sacred presence, we experience you in nature all around us, in the great blue heron preening in the sun. You dive with the brown pelican catching a fish and rest on one leg with a snowy egret asleep in the sun. You fill our hearts with peace when we are distressed and weary. Help us remember that in the difficult, scary times that have happened, especially recently, your love is also with us. You whisper in the brown grass of autumn and dance with the swirling leaves. You sing in the voices of frogs and crickets, sharing the joy and the struggle of all creation. You love us even when we feel unlovable and you call us to love each other with open hearts. You are the voice of love and justice calling us into right relationship with you and all of creation. Be with us today as we enter into this season and be with all who seek to create new relationships rooted in your abundant love. Amen. Thank you so much, Terry. So as we close and move into our optional um, time together in discussion, we just wanted to share that um, for those who don't know, Chime is a nonprofit that trains interfaith chaplains who are available to all. And if you feel moved, um, you're welcome to give an offering at chimeofmaine.org slash giving. And I know Lisa will put the um, link in the chat as well for anyone who feels moved. And um, I know some folks will be will be hopping off the Zoom, but for anyone who is interested in sticking around, um, our prompt this morning will be in this theme of solstice and shadows asking, what are you ready to let go of? And what are you ready to let in to your life? So for those who do need to hop off, um, we'll wave goodbye to you now and give you great thanks for being with us today and for sharing in this service with us. So feel free to unmute and say goodbye if you like. Goodbye. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Nice Thank to see you. familiar faces. <laughs> Thank you. I was very touched. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Lizzie, is it possible to get copies of the readings? Because they were amazing. Yes, we can email those to everyone who registered. Great, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you, Margaret. Be well, all. Take care. Take care. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Are you staying on, Jan, or are you leaving? Oh, she's gone. <laughs> That answers that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Well, we're happy to see everyone's faces and um, we thought it would be nice just to kind of freely chat about what um, kind of in the themes that we brought up today, what people feel ready to let go of in the season and what you're ready to invite in. So if anyone has something that comes to your heart or mind, please feel free to unmute and just jump right in. I just... Go ahead, Jean. <laughs> I just took on... Um, a new role in my church. I had to think about it because I'm pretty busy, but um, I'm going to be the liaison from our congregation to a Wabanaki ally team um, sponsored by Moosan, the State Advocacy Network. And there is a bill 
that will be reintroduced in Congress, I'll, I'll try to make this brief, um, with a list of demands for more sovereignty for tribes in Maine, not as much government control. Anyway, I took on the role of being the contact person from my congregation to work on this and try to get people to write letters, et cetera. So I guess I'm looking for more service in the new year. I'm really excited about it. Thank you. Something that I'm ready to let go of is that knot in my stomach that between the election and the COVID-19 crisis, um, that knot in my stomach that says it's not going to be okay. And I want to, moving into 2021, to step out on my faith and know that God is present, even in all the stress and all the everything that's going on, the divine spirit is present. He's reaching down to us, even as we reach up to him or her <laughs> to, to help us get through this. And I want to